Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and obliterate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into today's video. The U.S. stock market has reopened today after a long weekend, and it has been doing phenomenally. Just look at the year-to-date gains of the Nasdaq, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones. On top of that, we also know that Bitcoin is up 22% year-to-date, and Microsoft is already up 9.15% in their share price year-to-date, so this is phenomenal news for investors. We also see prestigious financial institutions such as Goldman Sachs increase their 2024 target for the S&P 500 for the second time this year, which is a very bullish sign for investors. But that's not all. Right now, everyone is talking about the Magnificent 7 stocks, and if you're not familiar, the Magnificent and seven stocks would consist of companies such as Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Tesla. According to a CNBC News headline, the Magnificent Seven profits now exceed almost every country in the world. So should we be worried about this and is a large crash coming for all of these stocks? In my opinion, I think investors should definitely ride this momentum wave upwards as the share prices continuously surge. However, I would recommend taking profits once you feel comfortable or once you've made enough money because that would be practicing proper risk management and if you know me, I love to practice proper risk management. We are into investing here, not gambling. So please practice proper risk management. We also got more good news in the form of the Commerce Department, which said that they will send $1.5 billion to chip maker Global Foundries to help it build a new factory near Albany, New York, and expand its semiconductor production in Vermont. For context, the United States government wants to see America to become the major cornerstone of chip making for the entire world. We have to remember that back in 1990, around 37% of the world's chips were made in America. However, that number has since shrunk down to just 12%. In other news, you should be aware that the gaming company named Nintendo recently fell by around 6% in their share price after releasing a statement which said that their Switch 2 console will be delayed until 2025. Now, obviously investors did not want to hear this. However, overall, I still like Nintendo as a company and I do like their stock. So I would love to hear your thoughts about Nintendo down down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about some artificial intelligence news, starting off with NVIDIA. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that NVIDIA's AI chips have become the gold standard for large language models, including OpenAI's ChatGPT. NVIDIA is a market leader in this space, and as of August, they made up 70% of the global AI chip sales. Essentially, NVIDIA relies on Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing for their semiconductors, while Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing actually relies on ASML. The reason for this is because ASML is actually the supplier which supplies TSMC so they can make semiconductors for NVIDIA. So if you are an investor in NVIDIA, feel free to also look into TSMC and ASML. And for context, I own all of these in my personal portfolio. But at the same time, you should not count out NVIDIA's rivals such as Intel and AMD, which also announced their own AI chips. We even heard that Meta Platforms, OpenAI, and Microsoft said that they will be using some of AMD's chips, in which their CEO described their chips as the industry's quote, most advanced AI accelerator. But that's not all, because the competition for AI chips has just become even more competitive. Because Alphabet, Amazon, and Microsoft are cooking up their own AI chips. Alphabet, more specifically Google, said that it's training its Gemini AI model on its own processors, not NVIDIA's. So clearly, the competition is heating up rapidly, and honestly, I own all of the companies that were mentioned here. This essentially guarantees me to win over the long term, considering that this segment is so large in the market that there will be multiple winners. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments about which of these companies are your favorites. Up next, let's talk about Berkshire Hathaway, and more specifically Warren Buffett, 
who is the chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, and why he trimmed his position in Apple and HP, while he also loads up on Chevron and Occidental. In my opinion, this is nothing to worry about, but investors should look further into Chevron as well as Occidental if they like big oil companies. Next up, you should be aware of Alphabet's Waymo company, which actually issued its first recall. Waymo had to release a software update after two of their robo-taxis hit the same truck just a few minutes apart. The reason why investors need to be paying attention to this is because Waymo actually has a partnership with Uber, and they are also in competition with Tesla because Tesla wants to release their own robo-taxis. But that's not all, because we also have GM, which owns Cruise, which is also trying to get on the robo-taxi market. Cruise had to pull their entire driverless fleet after one of its vehicles dragged a pedestrian 20 feet, causing serious injuries to the individual. This goes to show you that the competition in the robo-taxi space is extremely competitive, and that all of these companies need to continuously work on the robo-taxi software to make sure that it's safe for public use. Robo-taxis are just another part of the AI market, and this market is anticipated to grow from $538 billion currently up to $1.8 trillion by 2030. According to this author as well as myself, the top artificial intelligence stocks to buy right now would include companies like Palantir Technologies, which is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies. The next one clearly would be NVIDIA and AMD as well as Tesla, and then lastly, Supermicro computer is also one of the best AI stocks to buy right now, which we will talk about a little later in this video. The author also throws in an honorable mention in the form of SoundHound AI. This company operates a revolutionary voice AI platform, and they also have a strategic partnership with NVIDIA. Therefore, this author believes that they have an exceptional growth trajectory ahead of them, and if you want the ticker symbols and current share prices of these companies, you can look on screen right now, and with that being said, let's move on to our next story. Super Microcomputer, ticker symbol S. SMCI is still one of the best stocks to buy right now, even though their share price dropped by around 6.8%. Now, the 6.8% drop is actually not that bad, considering that earlier it had dropped by around 11.7%, but since then, some investors took this as an opportunity to buy the sell-off, which I personally did as well. Some investors speculate that the reason why Supermicro fell in their share price was due to poor earnings from Home Depot. For some background information, before the market opened, Home Depot published their fourth quarter earnings results which set a bearish tone for the entire market. Home Depot is a home improvement retail giant, and they indicated that inflation could continuously run high and that this will negatively impact their top and bottom line. If inflation continues to run hot, the Federal Reserve will likely delay lowering interest rates, which will negatively impact AI stocks, growth stocks, and the general stock market, specifically companies like Supermicro. But for me, I still think investors are overreacting, considering that Supermicro is still up 177% just in 2024 alone. And over the last year, the company has surged in their share price by around 757%. But that's not even the craziest thing. Investors, as well as analysts, still believe that there is 60% upside still left in this company, which is why many investors are still trying to buy into this company right now. So the recent decline in their share price could actually be a great buying opportunity for investors. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Speaking about fantastic technology companies, Companies, let's talk about why Kathy Wood of ARK Invest is betting heavily on two major stocks. Kathy Wood of ARK Invest and her ARK Innovation Fund has outperformed the S&P 500 index, which is a great stock market benchmark by a mile last year. The ARK Innovation ETF soared by 68%, while the index, which is the S&P 500, only jumped by around 24%. This goes to show you that Kathy Wood of ARK Invest tries to outperform the market by investing into highly innovative companies. And the two companies that we are going to highlight today would be CRISPR Therapeutics, ticker symbol CRSP, and Intellia Therapeutics, ticker symbol NTLA. So let's talk about why Kathy Wood is gravitating towards these companies. CRISPR Therapeutics is one of Kathy Wood's largest holdings in her ARC Genomic Revolution ETF with an 8.1% weight. CRISPR Therapeutics, as well as Intellia, focus on CRISPR gene editing, which involves cutting the genome in a particular location and allowing a natural repair process to take place within the genome. The idea behind this is that through the healing process, it will fix faulty genes responsible for creating diseases, so the results can be absolutely spectacular. I personally hold the CRISPR therapeutics in my portfolio ever since they reached their enormous milestone late last year when the United Kingdom authorized Kaschevy. 
and the reason why this was a huge milestone is because it marked their first ever regulatory nod for a CRISPR-based therapeutic. On top of that, CRISPR Therapeutics also partnered with Vertex Pharmaceuticals for this particular product. If you didn't know, Vertex is actually an experienced player in manufacturing and commercialization, and Vertex actually pays for around 60% of the development costs for this therapeutic. However, this is also offset considering that Vertex also gets to take home 60% of the profits from this therapeutic. Overall, I would say it's a pretty fair trade in regards to their partnership, and I am very excited for the future of CRISPR Therapeutics, which is why I personally hold them in my portfolio. We can also look forward to a future catalyst for this company, as CRISPR Therapeutics is also advancing their promising immuno-oncology candidates through clinical trials. And if all goes well, this biotechnology company could bring in at least one additional product to market later this decade. CRISPR Therapeutics is going to be a long-term hold for me, and I am very excited about the future of this company. Now, the next company we're going to talk about I'm not as excited about, and that would be Intellia Therapeutics. The reason why I personally am not excited about this company is that they don't have any products on the market. However, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest believes the future of this company looks very bright. She believes that there is a plethora of catalysts ahead for this company, which should increase their share price. The company is currently trying to formulate two treatments for various diseases, but until this is actually released to the public, the company is not going to make any money. So depending on how positive or negative the trial reports are for these treatments, it will determine the future share price of this company. In the end, I am far more bullish on CRISPR Therapeutics than I am in regards to Intellia Therapeutics, but I would love to hear your thoughts about both of these companies down below in the comments, because Kathy Wood of ARK Invest seems to love both of these companies. Next up, let's talk about Palo Alto Networks, which recently dropped in their share price. Palo Alto Networks, ticker symbol P-A-N-W, recently dropped by 12% in their share price after the cybersecurity company lowered its full year revenue and billings guidance. But these results did not just impact Palo Alto Networks, because other cybersecurity firms like CrowdStrike, Zscaler, and Checkpoint also decreased in their respected share prices. Now the interesting thing to me is that Palo Alto actually beat on their overall earnings and revenue results. For context, analysts thought the company would only bring in $1.30 per share, but they actually brought in an adjusted $1.46 per share. Likewise, analysts said that this company would only bring in $1.79 billion worth of revenue, but they actually brought in revenue of $2 billion. So all of this negativity is due to their future negative projections and not their current results. I actually own Palo Alto Networks, ticker symbol P-A-N-W, in my portfolio, but I am not planning to sell this company anytime soon, because I think investors are clearly overreacting here. Next up, let's talk about Solar Edge stock, which also decreased in their overall share price, in a similar situation to exactly what happened with Palo Alto Networks. Solar Edge Technologies, ticker symbol SEDG, reported a narrower than anticipated loss for their fourth quarter results, but they did fall short in regards to their revenue estimates. On top of that, just like Palo Alto, the company offered a lighter sales forecast than anticipated for future quarters. But let's look at the data here, because honestly, the numbers weren't that bad. For context, Solar Edge Technologies is a manufacturer of solar inverters, and they posted an adjusted loss of $0.92 cents per share on sales of $316 million. Their earnings per share actually crushed expectations in a good way because analysts thought the company would bring in a loss of $1.34, but they only brought in a loss of $0.92 cents per share, which is a huge improvement. However, they did fail to live up to revenue expectations considering that analysts believed the company would bring in $323 million, and they actually only brought in around $316 million. Analysts also were projecting that the company would tally in around $374 million for their future forecast. However, Solar Edge ended up guiding revenues between $175 million to $215 million, which is clearly below expectations. But there is a reason for this, and it doesn't have anything to do with Solar Edge as an individual company. Instead, this entire industry is struggling right now. In January, Solar Edge had to cut around 900 jobs, or approximately 16% of its workforce, and here's why. The entire Energy Solar Group, in which Solar Edge is a part of, literally was one of the worst performing industries in their respected categories, to where the group fell by a collective 7%. So Solar Edge is not the only one having a hard time here, which means that it's nothing fundamentally wrong with the company themselves, but rather just a dry season in this entire industry. So I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below about Solar Edge and whether or not you personally own them in your portfolio. But that's 
enough bad news, let's talk about some good news in regards to Amazon and Uber. According to the article, S&P Dow Jones Indices announced that Amazon, which is a huge e-commerce company, will be added to the Industrial Index, which will replace Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker symbol WBA. Additionally, Uber will be added to the Dow Jones Transportation Average, which will replace JetBlue. So this is great news for Amazon and Uber, but it's not good news for Walgreens nor JetBlue. This is why shares of Amazon and Uber increased today, while JetBlue and Walgreens decreased in their share prices. Next up, let's talk about Intel, because while other AI stocks have actually fallen today, Intel has actually increased in their share price, and here's why. Recently, Bloomberg reported that Intel could receive up to $10 billion in a additional grants and loans to support its chip fabrication business. So this is great news for Intel, especially while their competitors are falling in their share price right now, because Nvidia recently dropped by 4.4% and AMD recently dropped by 4.9%. But that's not all. Intel is also scheduled to host a conference on Wednesday, during which it will provide updates on its foundry business. So this is just another reason to bet on US-based semiconductor companies, especially in regards to artificial intelligence. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about this development. You should also know that Walmart posted very impressive quarter four earnings. Walmart, ticker symbol WMT, also confirmed that they will buy smart TV maker Vizio, which we talked about in a previous video, so feel free to rewatch that video if you want more information. But right now, let's focus on their earnings report. Walmart is America's largest retailer, and their e-commerce sales were through the roof, jumping by 23% year over year to surpass $100 billion. This is why the share price of Walmart surged by more than 5% recently, and they also raised their annual dividend by 9%, so this is just great news all around. Lastly, to round out the video, here's what we're going to talk about tomorrow, because NVIDIA Corporation, Lucid Group, and Rivian Automotive, as well as Etsy, are releasing their quarterly earnings reports. So remember to subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for that, smash that like button right now, comment your thoughts down below, and I will see you in the next YT video.